Well, we thought that Delhi had not got enough, but they had. And then some. Brilliant bowling performance by both sides in Sharjah. But Delhi just a tad bit better today. Big, big, big win for them. A uh, big boost to their net run rate as well as you will see at the points table at the end of this. So really, really fantastic performance by the Delhi bowlers. I'm Gaurav Kapoor. You're watching My 11 Circle Presents Crick Buzz Live. And I have two gentlemen with me here who will be very happy that a Sharjah game is ending with us saying that both the bowling teams have been spectacular. Hello to Sean Pollock and Pommy Mangwa. Polly, oh, look at you. Look at you both smiling. Just look at you both smiling. Sharjah, yeah. bowler's paradise. What's everyone worried about? Just go <laughs> Bring your best stuff. Come with the right attitude, and we've got some results. Do you, do you remember no, at the beginning of the show when we were talking about batsmen all the time? Do you remember I was the one supporter on your side, the one guy who said that if you're a bowler worth your chops, you're going to relish bowling over here and come up with a good performance. I would like the two of you to thank me for my foresight and my constant support. No. Silence. Because right, the just... support... The they're thanking me from constant. inside. From inside, they're thanking me. <laughs> Sorry, Polly, about the bowlers today. Yeah, they were really good. Uh, I thought they, they had came out, as I say, I think they did a lot of work on what was the right game plan. They came out with the right mindset. And they delivered. Both teams were really good. Um, I think Rajasthan would be very disappointed with their batting performance. It was always going to happen with Delhi that they were going to lose the odd wicket and the middle order would have to try and pull them out. And they got something that was competitive, not ideal. Uh, but Rajasthan, I think that just shows you where they're at in this tournament. I think they're struggling. Uh, your main three players are, are now low on confidence after starting the, the tournament on fire. And they don't really have much to come after those big three. Ben Stokes, he can't get into that middle order quick enough in order to make them competitive. But has their tournament been run? Um, you know, it's going to be a hell of an effort for them to come back from where they are. For me, uh, just on one incident in particular, and we'll come to the bowling completely. Uh, do you think that Rajasthan will be happy about how Ashwin got Joss Butler out? Uh, <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about I don't know about happy. Uh, I think the good thing is that there, there's no alternative but to accept that he is out. But I mean, I don't <laughs> think I don't like think. A big I don't think Shikhar gave him a warning before that catch. I still, I... <laughs> yeah, wait. Oh, I, can which, I can see which guy your friend is. <laughs> ah, no. You know, I'm a bit of a rabble rouser, but uh, I'm good hearted. <laughs> you, can, but, you can stick your wooden spoon in, you know, back in your back now. Scratch no, my own back. <laughs> but, uh, but today, if you see, the Rajasthan batsmen are going to want to, uh, the Rajasthan bowlers are going to want to pull the knife out of their back, which their batsmen have put in there, right? So, like, come on, yeah. guys. Come on. Yeah, uh, we did say it was a case of, you know, which bowling attack would, as a collective, be better. Um, I, I do think also that they have to do better with bat in hand. The, the two teams. Though we, in giving an opinion on, you know, how far apart they are, we might kind of go a long way into the Delhi camp and sort of separate them by some distance. I think at Charger, though, you don't expect that's going to happen. I mean, uh, Butler clips one in the air and, and, and then from there, you just don't, you don't get a sense they're getting going. You don't get a sense that they're, they're putting their opposition under pressure. I, I actually like watching this game for the fact that as bow, as a bowling side or two bowling sides, you you can't go to any excuses. So you can't you can't go softly, softly at an area. So in Sharjah and in Dubai, you can make a mistake in going for length, right? And and not quite get there and it gets hit and because of the big boundary someone will get caught you can go for a yorker and not quite get there and the guy will try and hit it and he'll get caught and so you're forgiven but here what we've seen is two bowling performances where guys have been a whole lot better than everybody else who's bowled there yes. even though the batting hasn't been quite up to it i think it's the bowling that's not let them just get freebies because you give freebies, they go off the ground. 
Yeah. Uh, if you look at that fall of wickets again, Polly, that's the thing. They, it was 72 for two. If you actually look at it, the halfway mark, 72 for two. You know, you're still saying that, yeah, you, you want to back the batting team. You've got a, a, you know, 11 to get with eight, eight wickets in hand. And on the back 10, 110 to get. It's not that bad, actually, but they've just collapsed after that. Yeah, I think that the three top guys, once they got out, uh, Lamarau, Jaswell, uh, we mentioned it at the 10 over break, that he didn't really look like he was going to be able to have that penetrative power to pick up boundaries at will. Um, he was going to struggle a little bit. And and even, you know, we mentioned that 20 of the 36 deliveries in that power play were faced by him and he only got 12 runs. So yeah. they were under pressure already by not scoring any runs. They are probably feeling that. And they needed someone in many ways to get off to a fast start just to relieve their pressure, allow them just to play for a while. And, um, you know, if they were one wicket down, as we were hoping they would be for their sakes, after 10 overs and 72 with those big guns at the crease, I think they could have made a competitive go of it. I think we're also starting to just see the surfaces uh, are going to start yeah. playing their part as the rest of the tournament goes on. More cutters were gripping just a little bit, a little bit more purchase for the spinners. And, and that's nice to see. So the bowlers are going to have something to work with. And, yeah, Ashwin, I, I thought, was superb. I mean, they would have been contemplating who do we go with do we go Axel Patel turn it away from the two right handers to start and Ashwin's obviously said no back me I'm I'm the one I'll come over the wicket I'll do this and he did it four overs two two for 22 nine dot balls um really good effort and you know you want your big players you want your guys with all the international yeah. experience to step at it up in important times and to that, that power play against Butler was huge uh, so to get that wicket was invaluable I think that, that there's there's also, uh, and Sean, you, you'll back me up here, I'm, I'm 100% sure, there's a case for someone living in your head. Um, and I think uh, Ponting and Shreya Saya and Ravi Chandra and Ashwin would not have missed that at all. They would have known that, hold on, there's this little battle that's kind of a, a sideshow over here. How can we take that and make it a good thing for us? How can yeah. we do that? So when it comes to the power play, where Butler generally reigns, he's, he's the man. He can de destroy teams when batting there. He needs to because he's a big player for them. He's the one who's got some sort of form. Instead of going to man of the match previous game, bowling, power play, pitch, um, getting a bit slower, Aksha Patel was coming into the side, which, as Sean says, you could have gone with. They've gone with, hold on, there's a whole other by play here. We know you're really good, Ashwin. But we also know that you're not going to let this guy have any freebies whatsoever. And he's now sitting there going, how do I take him on? Do I just whack him? Do I just, you know, so, and it worked today. But that's, that's something I think we would have certainly been discussed and used to their own advantage. That's a great point, Paul. You have the battle within the battle, right? I mean, Polly, you've seen that. And I mean, leadership roles yourself. Sometimes yeah. you just see that ah, this guy just ticks a little more against this particular guy in the opposition. Yeah, when we first started up here, we often used to try and tee up countrymen against each other. So uh, when there was a possibility to get a Australian spinner at an Australian batsman up front, you know, it's just that little bragging right. So that just puts a little different element to it and can play on the mind. And if you get away with two or three dart balls because of it, then you've uh, on the way to win the battle. So um, there's definitely, and there's guys who've had history. I mean, you know, Kevin Peterson, for example, always talked about how he didn't play the left arm spin all that well. So as soon as he comes to Greece, you got to get someone on like that just to make him think about it, you know. Um, You've read Singh, perhaps, just, the pie chucker, as he called him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Affectionately so. Affectionately. <laughs> get him. Get him on. But those mini battles are great for fans to watch on the outside as well. I, I don't think anybody, Pommy, you're right. Just like the team doesn't, I don't think the spectators miss that trick as well, where they go, oh, Butler's batting, and hey, he's probably going to throw it to Ashwin. And then as soon as that happens, everybody just lights up because... Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, you're thinking, yes, the bowler has come and he's taken a wicket. But this wicket comes with context, right? And it just ends up. It's one wicket out of 10. But sometimes that one wicket feels to the batting side like two because you just get deflated a little bit, right? Polly, when, yeah. when you were bowling, you're saying countrymen, any, anybody who you enjoyed getting out a little more than anybody else? Well, 
over the years you you end up bowling in the nets to a lot of people and, and graham smith was my boy i, I sort of had it over him uh, <laughs> when we went back to provincial provincial stuff and even the rpl i came on and um in 2008 in fact I'd knocked him over a couple of times provincially, and in the RPL, I had uh, Yogi Tukwali up to the stumps, and we got him stumped. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think that was one of the battles that, that we teed up. But, I mean, the analysts these days, too, they'll tell you. They'll tell you who you can't play against in the first six. Um, they'll hit you with stats and, and facts and figures as a you know management staff. And yeah. often it makes sense. Um, you know, when we used to, when South African or Australian or or guys come to, to open the batting in India, the first thing they do is we want to get a local Indian spinner onto them in that first six overs, one bites, one skids on. Yep. It's not something they're accustomed to facing every single day. So those battles are key. If it can just get you off to a good start, so important. Hmm. Well, let's have a look at the rest of the bowlers uh, for Delhi because it's been a good day for bowlers. It's been a good day for us. It's not just because it was a good day for bowlers. They made it a good day for themselves. They bowled with discipline. Rabada once again. Well, look at it. You shake that tree and wickets fall out. Yeah. Look at him. He's just racing ahead now. I think you might yeah. as well just lock the purple cap in the safe in his room already. Right. 15 wickets already. What is it? Six games. Yeah, I tell you what, he, he didn't have his best day. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I know it's, it's three for 35. I know it might seem strange that I say that, but he didn't have his best day at all. In fact, um, right up front, he'd be disappointed with how he went up at the front because he just, I think both his overs were starting off trying to be dead straight and back of a length and ended up down the leg side a couple of times and couldn't really pull it back, you know. And it was the other end that did the business. Nokia, first of all, then Ashwin as well. Um, and at the back end, what he is doing is taking wickets for fun. He can't not take a wicket. So That's right. at the back end of the game, he hadn't taken a wicket yet, comes on and he takes three wickets. That's just, that's what's happening. And I guess you reap, um, you, you know, all the good stuff that you've done. And, and the tone has set generally in the side and the partnership partnership that he's got with Nokia is working really well. And, and now... There you go, wickets galore. Yeah, and Polly, I mean, I feel like with uh, Rabada, it's almost like, uh, you know, the other team is almost like Manchester United last weekend. They're just oh, giving them gifts, right? They're just letting them in. <laughs> yeah, like Liverpool were, exactly. Um, <laughs> have a look at 10 right there. So that's five for 47. <laughs> we gave one more, actually, didn't we? Liverpool gave one more than United did. Yeah. <laughs> that's just how hospitable <laughs> we are. We're only, we're only playing with 10 men for how long? Exactly. <laughs> Nobody puts that in the scorecard. Let's go back to that graphic um, with regards to the combination of the two. Yeah. And I mean, when you've got a performance, so what is it? I think they got five for 46 in so the they one were 19. Game they were 19 five up till today. And now they've got another four. So that's 23. Yeah, look, at the, look at the Chennai game. So eight overs. You've got five for 47. Yeah. And then in the Bangalore game, you've got six. For 46 in your eight overs, uh, you know, when you've got a duo oh, doing that, and today yeah. they four wickets between themselves. Um, yeah, it's absolutely even four wickets uh, against Kolkata. So they are, oh, they're dovetailing beautifully. And, you know, Ricky Ponting and that uh, management group must be really, really happy with what they've got going. And as Pom says, you know, sometimes you just get on that golden run and you just expect it. Um, you know, you come on, and whenever you come on, you, you pick up wickets and, you know, it's it's just a confidence thing where you walk to the ground expecting. I mean, Virat Kohli had that season when he got all those hundreds. You know, every time he got to the ground, he's expecting I'm going to get a massive score. Uh, I think KG is just to. expecting he's going to have an impact. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at the bowling analysis again because it was really a fantastic bowling. Remember, they didn't have too much what we thought. And now, you know, Paulie's telling you about the surface <laughs> and how maybe this is not a, this was, was not a 200 surface, I guess, today. Uh, it's not in the afternoon games. But when you look at it, uh, you know, you, you just, you're getting performances. You get stoyness in and suddenly eyes light up that the others are being miserly. We're not getting a chance. So it's great uh, for me to get. Uh, a stoyness in at that time because suddenly eyes light up so we can take him on and he gets two wickets. Yeah, there's 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 a case as well to be made for a Harshal Patel. 
who yep. in that side, you have to try and balance an attack. And and whilst he has as many as six bowlers, he sometimes needs over. Sometimes Harshal won't bowl. Um, he won't bowl four overs. And you probably don't expect that he'll bowl four overs in Sharjah, right? Because you expect the pace that he bowls at, he's the one who's going to disappear out the ground. But he turns up, bowls decently, goes for 20, whatever it is, and he's going okay. So he's got him as a guy he can fall back on. He's clever. He can bowl that Yorker. He can... And I think what's also happening with Harshal, as smart as he is, is that here are these other guys so imposing themselves on the game and at the top of their game in terms of skills with Rabada and Nokia, uh, Aksha Patel, uh, Ashwin. They're all going really well. Marcus Stoinis, when he is required, batting well, so he's bowling well, you know. Uh, and so he feels confident too and just can do what he does confidently. I can bowl slow balls, knows when to bowl them, and everything is just working. It's a team that's just gelling uh, beautifully. Polly, he bowled yeah. a ball which I really liked today. He bowled a few slower ball full toss. <laughs> you, can't, yeah. you can't get under it. What do you do with it? <laughs> yeah, the person who's done a few of those who, who successfully over the years has been Bravo because he actually yeah. goes for the slow Yorker at times. Yeah. And it sometimes comes out as a, as a full toss. But I think the point Pommy's is making as well is and it's so important in a T20 and in a one-day international is to have that six bowling option. Yeah. Because on a certain day, you can get four from AXA. On a certain day, you don't have to use him for the full four. Stoyness comes in and does you two. The teams that bank on five guys doing the job, it's, it's difficult because there's invariably one guy who goes the distance on the day. Um, they've got international bowlers as well. Um, so lots of experience, lots of uh, preparation at dealing with pressure. And that's why I think their bowling unit's doing well. Mumbai is exactly the same. They've, they've got plenty of experience there and plenty of options. There is, obviously, when you say six bowlers, there are there was, there was are teams that are playing with four proper bowlers and then two who, who are sort of your, they'll do it together, right? I mean, I'm looking at Hyderabad, right? Where you've got Abhishek yeah. and Samad as your fifth and sixth bowler. The batting teams see that, right? Batting teams see that and they plan for that. They know. When you have only five, you know, there's nowhere to hide. When you know this is six, you don't know what's going to happen. Who will you target? Akshar, man of the match, suddenly Shreyas only bowls him two overs today for eight runs. So you're, mm -hmm. you're holding, perhaps saying, we'll, we'll take him in his last over. But he <laughs> just doesn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, think, I think also, um, and without trying to point any fingers, um, when things are not going well, the captaincy then gets tested like you're right under the pump to use everyone exactly right. But it's difficult because what you have planned in your head for who you have as your bowlers is not necessarily what happens. You're then reacting and you're trying to follow the game and plug gaps. So your fast bowler, who you thought you were going to bowl to up front, goes for... 15 in his first one now you're sitting there thinking well does he bowl a second or doesn't he and you might go to someone else so if you only have five bowlers you've got a problem because then your hands are tied if you don't go with him you go with somebody else then somewhere else he's got to come back and it's just a, a, a huge problem you end up running to somebody who wasn't going to bowl in the game can you bowl me one here but when it's going well it's beautiful. You make as many choices as you like and things just happen. Oh, well, I'll bowl you a second here because you're winning the game for me and, and I'll bowl him over there or I won't bowl him. And, I, and it just looks all good. And yep. when it's the other way, it looks terrible. Yeah, well, you've got to... Because the thing is that you have to bowl the 20 overs whereas some batsmen may not get a bat at all, but all your mm -hmm. bowlers will definitely come into action. So always. And I'm not just saying it because of my current company. But I always say, it. it's the bowlers. Put your bowlers in first. Put your bowlers in first. Shreyas Iyer today, in fact, after the game has said that I'm enjoying captaincy. We thought that it was an underpass score. But when you have a dream bowling unit like this, then it makes everything very easy. Well, it really is. That one in Mumbai, these two bowling units are looking absolutely fantastic. Well, it's, you know, it, it was... You may call it an underpass score. They haven't just won. They've won by a fair margin. I mean, this is... 
46 runs is a big margin in Sharjah. I don't think you're going to perhaps see that again. But today, the evening game perhaps played, the surface played, played a bit similar, Polly, to what it played for the afternoon game. Uh, that was a week back where it was just sort of, I don't know, it was holding up a little bit. It was not a 210, 220 surface. It wasn't. So, I mean, Sharjah's playing a few tricks as well, which we fans love because it's bat and ball. But do teams now have to plan differently for Sharjah? Yeah, and I think when you, you look at certain surfaces, even in the normal RPL, uh, you know, when you play in Bangalore, you know you can chase because the wicket's about it. It tends to come on and it doesn't really matter what happens. You feel like you can still hit balls out the ground. But if the surfaces start to hold up a little bit and wear as the game goes on, then all of a sudden the chasing side doesn't have pace on the ball and uh, the ball just stopping, the cutters are gripping, the spinners are, are getting more purchase you know, chasing scores down is going to be much more difficult. So you might see the trend as the games go on is that uh, with all these used pitches that you, when you get your opportunity to bat on the perfectly rolled surface, go for it. And then hopefully that slows up at the back end of the, of the match. It's for me, it's 18, five now from what I'm told by the director saying 17, five. So 17 games won by the team batting first mm. and, and five you know, won by the team chasing. Do you know, and, and yet, if we look at the tosses, we'll find that it's skewed the other way, that teams are choosing to, to actually bat second. They're choosing to chase. And it, it's, it's Today a, he did. Yeah. We're, we're, we're weirdly sitting in commentary boxes going, we don't understand why these guys are doing this. You know, why? why I mean, I, I hoped uh, yesterday, I did a toss yesterday, and it was David Warner who was there. And I thought, if he wins it, he's definitely going to bat, you know, because he's one of those captains and his team goes that way. But I, I would have loved for KL to win it and say, yeah, I want to bat second. And then go, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Are, are we yeah. just silly and when we say this and the results end up this way? But I agree with Sean 100% that the conditions, you've got to use the best that's available to you. And what's available to you is that a fresher pitch is going to allow your batsman to play better. And it then means your opposition have to deal with the elements along with your bowling lineup. True. Surely you don't want to put things against yourself. Well, you know, they said it in gully cricket. You win the toss and you bat first. You know, because <laughs> yep. by the time you're done batting, your mother may call you because it's dinner time. So, you know, <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's have a look at uh, the My 11 Circle Ultimate Team of the Day and see the top 11 players. If you had them in your team in this particular combination, if you had Joss Butler as your captain, Etmai as your vice captain, uh, this would have ended up well for you uh, because today has not really been a batsman's uh, day as it usually is in charge. It's been about uh, the bowlers and you see a fair number of bowlers that are showing up there. Uh, we also have our champion of the day, My 11 Circle. Let's uh, see who that is. Let's have a quick leg say. Uh, Mazid Ahmed from Uttar Pradesh, 439 points. Good work on the beard, bro. Well done. Yeah, it's a bit of grooming. Good job there. So uh, that was it. We'll have a quick look at the points table as well. And uh, we were worried about Rajasthan with this. And, you know, there's there's this Mumbai-Delhi pack almost. And I love the fact that they're playing each other on the weekend, right? That's going to be a magnum opus Sunday evening. Yeah, clear your calendars kind of match. Uh, but there you go down below now. you got Chennai with four points out of six. Rajasthan with four points out of six. Just two points out of Now, Bangalore. Bangalore would want to break away from this pack. Calcutta would want to break away from this pack, right? Now, mm -hmm. both these teams on the weekend are playing teams below them. Kolkata plays Punjab, Bangalore plays Chennai. Now, these two results go the way of Kolkata and Bangalore. Geez, that five pack's moving away, isn't it? Yeah, um, but the beauty, I keep saying it, the beauty is that, is that when you yeah, stack them up square together, up, yeah. yeah, when you stack them up together, you go, hmm. Yeah, so and so should beat. Uh, nah, that's not how it works. It don't work like that. So Chennai, as bad as they might have been in in a certain game, they turn up in another game and they chase the score down without losing a wicket. You go, okay. So are these 
these guys okay? Are they like, uh, are they okay now? Are they gonna like win? They lose the next one. You know, so yeah, <laughs> we'll be doing this right up until we get to the to the playoffs when we I, don't know. You know what's gonna happen? Tommy, we've done this so many times, right? We've done this over a decade. <laughs> Two weeks in, three weeks in, half face stage. Oh, teams are breaking away, teams. It still goes down to the last match on the last day of the league <laughs> where you're still battling for who's going to be one, who's going to be two, three, four. Oh, is five going to make it? What's happening with seven? It just goes. And Polly, isn't that just one of the most amazing things here? Not, I'm sure, not when you were part of the squad because it can be, it can be gut wrenching and, and heart stopping. But when you're watching it from the outside, it's just, it's beautiful how it plays out every time. Yeah, it is. And I mean, Delhi, for example, are thinking, gee, if we get two more wins, that's us basically into the playoffs because if you get to 14 points, uh, I know at some stage in the tournament in the old days, now you've got the the super overs, but uh, we used to be, and, and in Dubai, you're not going to get rain, but you'd also hope, you, oh, maybe if that game was rained out and they only got <laughs> one point, <laughs> that means that we automatically threw, and if you the other games, hope your results go your way. So, you do. You start to follow it more closely. Um, but I suppose that the trend is for the bottom teams is, is how do they pick themselves out because they've got to go on some serious runs now if they're going to get to that qualification. Um, and after this weekend, four games in the space of two days, all of a sudden things start to become more clearer and clearer as the tournament progresses. Yeah, because by the time this weekend is done, you're pretty much almost exactly at the halfway mark, 56 in the league stage, 27 done by the time this weekend ends. So, you know, Monday means halfway stage, which means things start getting pretty clear. But as Pommy's saying, don't count them chickens yet. Don't count them chickens. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy. It's like, you know, slipping when you're about to get the title, that sort of thing, you know. In, I'll, I'll leave that there, actually. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I love how you've just thrown that in, wanting us to go, we bite it, but we don't bite it. We're not biting the bait you're throwing in the water, Mr. Mangwa. No way we are. We've got a boost time in the meet, and we've got a new name on this, and Delhi will be very happy to see his name featuring here. Uh, it's Shemron Hetmeyer, who's on our boost stamina meter today. Uh, took three catches as well. Was gone in the outfield. He's doing well. It 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 happens, Polly, doesn't it? You you get runs. I mean, he's anyway very safe in the outfield. But when you get the runs under your belt as well, suddenly you're just running that extra inch. Or you're jumping that extra centimeter higher, aren't you? Yeah, the word over uh, confidence is overused in, in cricketing terms, isn't it? But you know, when you go in and you get a score, all of a sudden you get into the field. You're feeling happy about the way you performed, and you want the ball to come to you. Yeah. When you go and have a bad patch and you, you can't get any runs on the board, you almost want to go hard at, at third man and fine leg thinking, well, I don't want to make another mistake again. Yeah. And both of those catches that I took today can be examples of where someone just backs out of it, allows it to bounce and stops it for going for the boundary. But he committed, he got in there nice and low, and he's a wonderful fielder. There's a lot of West Indians in this RPL that are superb fielders, and they've, they've put on some serious displays for us. Um, and they're natural athletes, aren't they? They're just so versatile and athletic yeah. that they, they make fielding easy at times. And Delhi will be happy with his batting effort today also, Pommy, because, uh, you know, people around him have been getting runs, and today he really is. That was today on a pitch where most batsmen have struggled, Hetmeyer was hitting sixes for fun at one time. Yeah, and, and if, you, if you look at the game and, and think, right, you know, how much does he affect the game with them winning by 49 runs, are his runs, you know, were they were his runs necessary? They they really were in that, you know, 185 to get um, is you know vastly different to 160 to get at Charger. Yeah. You know, yeah. they bat totally I think about different. About 60 odd in the last five because predominantly because of him. Correct. So he shifts them when there's been that collapse. They've lost too many wickets. They lost wickets up front. And it just reinforces for them that if the other guys attack and don't quite do well, mm. then there's always somebody who's going to take up the mantle and is able to do the job, whether it's Stoyness or it's Hetmeyer or on another day. And they're hoping now, I think, that Shika Dawan can get a score as well in, in one of the games that come up sooner rather than later so that all of their players can have done something in the tournament 
and the confidence just continues to go in the whole group as a, as a batting side. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it's a valid point, and I think they can get better. Um, mm. You know, the Delhi team, yeah. uh, their bowling department, I think they, it all depends on decisions they've made. But the batting lineup, you've had two or three guys that have had really good RPLs so far, and there's maybe two there that can just lift it a gear. So that's, that's really good signs when you're playing convincing cricket and there's still a, a space for an improvement. Yeah, it is. And Delhi will be looking at that and saying, well, oh, that's good. And today, you know, even with their seven and eight, if it's Harshal and uh, Aksar, the Patel bros coming at seven and eight can give you a few handy runs as well. Harshal has been very effective in domestic cricket, bad sub higher. So that's a that's a good answer for them for their number seven. So things are looking good. They need a few more contributions. And well, what do you know? I mean, they're already top of the table. Where will they go? Yeah, the only thing, the only thing you'd say, guys, is, is you... You don't want to peak too early ever. Yeah. yeah. So, and this is this is not me saying they have. It's me supporting Sean's statement that says um, there are guys in their lineup who can still improve. So that's a good thing. You know, they if they can't say we've played you know perfect games. There may be games that have ended up with like, look, this looks like fantastic. It's a fantastic result. And it looks like we've done everything absolutely right. But when they go into the change room and they analyze it, they go, hmm, yeah, maybe that, maybe that, maybe that over there. And that's a good thing to keep doing as, as you go along. Delhi fans have a little bit of trauma. I'm sure none of the squad does because a lot of them were not even playing then. But 2009, the South Africa tournament, Polly, you'll remember Delhi had ended with clean top of the table. It was 11 out of 14 wins in the league and then get blown apart by an Adam Gilchrist masterclass for Deccan in the semi-finals, right? So, That's I mean, in. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was a... But was it, was, it, was it the same system? I don't think it was. No, where, it was semis. Um, it was semis. Like one played four, two played three. Yeah. And then yeah, they changed it. Yeah. And, now. yeah, definitely. And Deccan, and Deccan had finished fourth. Yep. And they won that year. <laughs> it was a, what was it? An 84 of 37 or some such. Yeah, is what something Gilchrist. like that. It's they, just, they just ran into the <laughs> Gilly Expressions. Which is pretty average these days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gilly. <laughs> Oh, these, days, <laughs> these days, these days, you just call it Tuesday, right? I mean, it's just, exactly. just oh. another Tuesday. All right. Well, tomorrow is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. We have two games that are happening on the Saturday. That's right. Super Saturday, as we like to call it. Special Saturday. We've got uh, the double header. We've got uh, Punjab and uh, Kolkata that are playing the first game. Tomorrow, that's happening in Abu Dhabi, the home for Kolkata. And uh, Punjab will well, just be, for love or money, give us something. For love or money, anything, anything. Just the one win out of, uh, out of the six games they've played so far. And it's really sort of been a season that, uh, yeah, I mean... How do you how do you do that? How do you, Polly? How do you how do you shake that off? Because they it's looking pretty rough for them, right? I mean, Anil Kumble yeah. in the previous match said that Chris Gale was was due to play, uh, but he got food poisoning. If he gets all right, can't drop Puran now. Right? We spoke about this last night as well. Can't drop Puran. So what? Are you making way for Maxwell then? Yeah, it'll be an interesting one to see what they do because you know the top of the order has basically been their strength throughout the tournament. So now to to fiddle with that one bit of the unit that's worked pretty well, but um, they are oh, they they're calling all pockets. Um, you know, there's two games that they should have won at the start, uh, and if they'd done that, all of a sudden things look differently. But now they just want to try and get in a run, and the only way to do that is to start with an one victory. Um, and if you look at it, I would think Kolkata would be one of those sides where you think if we get this right, we can beat them on our day because Kolkata, although they're looking good in the position that they're sitting at the log, they haven't played the best cricket. And it was almost a surprise that they got home, home, home over the line against Chennai. So it is an opportunity. Um, but yeah, I, there's been, I mean, I think they've made the most changes, haven't they? Kings they've 11 throughout they've the three, so three in the last game. They've pretty much been doing that all throughout. We'll pull the squad up and I have a feeling that they probably, I don't know, just to guess another two or three tomorrow as well. I, I think that, I, I don't know, I, have, I saw this squad yesterday. I had this feeling that Deepak Huda may come in because he can bat at seven. He can give you overs, gun fielder, right? You get him in. But look at the number of people, Pommy. Who have just fall? Who started and have fallen by the wayside? Krishna Pagotam, 
सरफराज खान करुण नायर क्रिस जॉर्डन जेम्स नीशप मुर्गन अश्विन और दीज आर सेवन पीपल हु हैव स्टार्टेड एंड जस्ट दे डोंट सीम लाइक दे इन द मिक्स एनीमोर या सो वी सेड एट द स्टार्ट राइट दैट व्हेन यू लूज दैट्स द प्रॉब्लम व्हेन यू लूज मेनी इन अ रो एंड एंड माय नंबर फॉर हाउ मेनी यू लूज बिफोर it goes haywire is 3 that's that's the number of games so once you when you lose three games when you go to game 4 i think everyone's frazzled and 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 what what is required is is almost a fresh start whether you can get a a few days rest or um or you know shift the team totally and and hopefully you get a win in that next game or whatever it is but it makes things very difficult because and i like the word sure news is in that you're searching you you're searching so much there for me their error kings 11 punjab is that after game 1 if you're changing your team you're saying you haven't picked correctly for game uh, you know for that first yeah. game you you haven't done your selection well because if your guys turn up from 6 months of inactivity and someone has a poor game and you drop them what, what, where are they supposed to have had the form from like <laughs> and where's the other guy got the form from yeah. that you've decided should now come into the side so for me that was number 1 and then also the fact that they should have been on the winning side 3 out of 3 in those first 3 games then you you play well you've done everything just about well you haven't quite got over the line in a couple of super overs but your teams are changing three men at a time like each time yeah, yeah that that's just too much so now what are they going to do i mean i don't know what they're going to do but chris gale we're talking about mujib came in in the previous game did harper bra come in also in in the previous yep. game yes. um who someone else came in keeper came in right yeah from simran yeah from simran came in in the in the previous what is going on i got uh, three wicket keepers in the last three games they they're the keepers of keepers nishim and jordan yeah nishim and jordan have played and you yeah. the best option between them fact, now both have been left out so yeah they they are a little bit yeah and i think it was yesterday uh, i got to tell you pomi yesterday but shawn and me started off the show and we kept saying you know punjab is they've played better than this they've played better than being at the end and at the end it needed a a straight talk in yorkshire men to sort us out and say i disagree with the two of you i don't think they've played well at all so we're like, whoa money <laughs> i think that was money you said so, I don't think I disagree with you guys. I don't think they played well at all. So yeah, that was that was Warney who said that. But that I mean, that's what that's what it looked like yesterday, didn't it? Yeah. So, so from they've gone from playing well to not playing well at all. So yeah. in in the first, if we look at their three games and and say first three games, what happened? How did they go? A couple of opening batsmen did well, and they didn't necessarily bowl well. And I think. Uh, changes of bowling and this and that and the other could have been a little bit better but should have got over the line they didn't since then it's oh, it's been a bit of a nightmare even though think, they've been they've Tommy, been do you think do you think tevatia broke them <laughs> oh it broke some bowlers yeah i mean they, they i, I mean broke I, some bowlers the way i mean i said it like a light statement said it like a joke but do you think polly that that loss has just a loss like that can really it can rankle can't it it can and coming off the back of the, the first one what did they they were level scores with three balls to go yeah and they ended up going to super over which they lost uh then they win the next game so you think okay everything's fine uh and in the third game it, it comes down to a stage where what did they need like almost 70 in the last three overs or, or four overs um 85 and 5 yeah Yeah, it is six. Yeah, they went far down and they managed to to do it. So, yeah, those are huge body blows, particularly when it affects the personnel that you choose going forward. Mm. You know, if it's if it's the same side and it's a body blow, you take it. Uh, much like Chennai tend to do over the years, but when it brings about three or four changes, 
and then people are in and out. You start looking around the squad, not knowing if you are or aren't going to play. Uh, I think that's the issue that it created. Um, and then obviously the confidence and, and the lack of points is has been what's what's uh, what's hurt them. Okay, let's look at Kolkata as well because uh, they're on the other side tomorrow and uh, they're playing in Abu Dhabi, of course. And uh, really, I don't think you're going to see a change here, Bobby. Yeah, I like them. So I, I know Sean said, you know, they, they maybe haven't played well. And I, I, I agree with that, that they haven't necessarily played played as well as, as they could have. But I like them as a side. I, I, I found it peculiar, though, the fact that Narayan didn't open and then walked in somewhere at four or whatever four. before... Before yeah. Morgan, before Dinesh Kartik, before uh, Morgan and Russell. Uh, yeah, before Russell. Yeah, yeah, I just found it peculiar. He didn't waste any deliveries. What did he get? Seventeen off eight balls or something in, in the end. But but still, you're going. Mm, if he's not opening, then let him hit his seventeen off eight after all the other blokes have failed to have a go. You know, then that's fine. So I don't know whether that's a, a sort of a Baz McCullum. I've still got my arm around your, your, you know, your shoulder. Your, I'm not throwing you away. You're still a big part of whatever. Maybe that's what it is. And he got away with it this time. But another time, guy walks in there whilst your batting lineup's waiting, and he chews up ten balls, twelve balls, and you lose by fifteen runs. And now you're then asking yourself questions. But as a side, I think I like their balance. Uh, I've always, in, in trying to analyze them, I've always said maybe one batsman is is shy, and I don't know where, uh, but one batsman shy. Tripathi has done well, and I think he fills that gap. And then Morgan, uh, Nitish Rana's good, um, um, Dre Russ okay. is fine, Dinesh yep. Kartik is fine. It's also, if you look at other teams, so look at Delhi as a standard, when you get to number seven and number eight, I think they have they don't have as much Kolkata Knight Riders. They, they don't have as much coming down let's down the it, bottom there. Out. Yeah, let's pull it out. I mean, if you get if you get Narin, would probably back at seven, and Pat Cummins would bat at eight. If you were not to use Sunil Narin as an opener and send him after Dre Russ, you're then mm. getting him at seven and Pat Cummins at eight, mm. which is uh, I mean, it's not it's that okay. It's okay, but I think you're hoping more than you're believing that you're going to get runs. Fair point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you're sending Akshar in, if you're sending um, Harshal. Trying to think, Harshal in, they're, you know, they're batters and you expect them to get runs. They're not bowlers. Yeah. They're not, you're not looking at them and saying you're bowlers first before you're, you're batters. They're, they actually uh, are expected to get runs. But Bobby, on, the, on, the, on the flip side, the other day, they said Naran is opener and Raul Tripathi, their opener comes at number eight. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I'm just right. <laughs> it's not gonna I'm, happen again. <laughs> there's a bit of draw of lots happening with their batting order. It's a bit of a lucky draw. <laughs> just draw yeah. your number and then go out. But what is their middle order done? Right? Let's have a look. We've got some uh, graphics with uh, the middle order, as you know. Uh, you know, this is what I'm talking about, the, the lucky draw, right? To come because yeah. there you go. It's just Morgan is like five five six six five. Kartik is three four five five seven. Then six four four six. <laughs> yeah, I think for for me, I think Bears first of all would have bought uh, Stephen Fleming a couple of years the other night because that kept him in the tournament. <laughs> didn't think they were going to be going down there. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, hey, I mean, you can't, Sean. Again. You can't, Sean. <laughs> Because they're bubbles. The bubbles. Uh, the bubbles. You, you can't be five okay. people beer. Okay, I'll for that. But, I mean, oh, I watched that, a bottle of sanitizer or something. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I watched that game and the, the attitude of Chennai was like, we're going to get the score. And the, the urgency running between the wickets, there was just nothing. I was like, sure, I hope it doesn't bite them in the bum here because there's a good chance to can the way they, they're approaching us. But I think that was an important little victory for them, and it gives them a nice little boost. And now all I think Kolkata need to be competitive is you've got to get Kartik and you've got to get Dre Russ into form. If those two fire, all of a sudden things look totally different for them. Uh, Morgan, they can bat around him as well. At the top of the order, Tripathi, they find someone who can make a score. And if you've got Cummins coming in at eight on the back of Kartik and Dre Russ in form, 
then it's good because you'll just have to walk in and maybe whack two or three boundaries. But the key is those two. If they don't get them firing, then they're going to be dropping down that table very quickly. Mm, so you've got to be careful about that. Well, let's have a look at the second game uh, that they're playing uh, tomorrow. There's two games, of course, tomorrow. Uh, the first game was that, and the second is Chennai Bangalore. This is always an exciting encounter, isn't it? Ooh, we're looking at it. Chennai and Bangalore. Ooh. This is this is all. This is how every television network all over the world is right now. Virat Kohli. MS Tony. <laughs> it's just on loop again and again. And again. <laughs> yeah, but this is always a this is a marquee encounter. But what is so interesting is that usually this encounter happens with Chennai being the form team going into it, right? Mm. It's the other way around this season. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I'll say yes because. I you think, don't seem convinced. No, I, the reason I'm not convinced is because I haven't been convinced about RCB either. Mm. Uh, I, I just haven't. It, I watch them, and, and and I think I've said this on, on here before, where season after season after season, I go, surely they've got to do it this year. Surely. I mean, Virat, AB, just them on their own. They can just, the two of them, they can bat and it'll be fine. Nah, they bat, they get runs. Navirat's got some runs now. He's in form. De Villiers is hitting it well. They've got a batting order that's wor working. Particle is fantastic. Love watching him. Just great swing of the bat, everything. And you think, yep, they look all right. Oh. And somehow, <laughs> it, uh, somehow, you know. And, and spare a thought. Spare a thought. For you, Vendor Chehel who game after game and year after year is getting one for two for three for going at seven and over max. That's yeah. what he's going at, you know, and, and yet, uh, head is hanging when you get in the change room. Mm. I don't know how they do it. I, and I, you know, but they've got a great chance this time to beat Chennai. They've got a great chance. I think. I've got one shout for a for a change tomorrow. It looks like Chris Morris may come in, and if he does, uh, Polly, does he come in place of Isuru Udana? Uh, maybe, or maybe in place of Zampa. Um, no, Z Moin Ali. Zampa, uh, Moin Ali played the last game for Zampa. Yeah, Moin Ali played for Zampa. Yeah, but yeah, okay. I would, yeah, I, I would, I would probably go in place of him. Um, I think, I mean, it's their big purchase, wasn't it? That was the one they spent a lot of money on, Morris, and, you know, we sit on the side. So they'll be wanting to get him in. Um, I think he does just bring a little bit of depth and a little bit of firepower, just something different. Udana, I think he gets some shape, and at the back end, he's got that slow ball. But often the guys who can bowl a little bit more express pace and get a little bit more bounce sometimes can have an effect. So I'm sure they'll be raring to get him in, and if that side strain has recovered, that they'll try and find a, a way to get him into the unit. I think with Chennai, Chennai is going to make two changes. The first change that they have to make is that they are ready to make changes. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I thought I, I knew you would say that. Like I, I, I wish, I wish there was a way to test whether I'm telling the truth or not because I'm. I knew you'd say that. Like <laughs> I would have given you, I would have given you the my eleven circle badger honor if you had got that right. Because nobody oh. wanted today. <laughs> nobody wanted. We are all terrible. We're just so bought into the Sharjah myth today. <laughs> We've just been sold down the river by the surface. But yes, if Chennai does choose option one, the first door, which is make some changes. Gentlemen, where would you like to see those changes? Who There's like a difficulty for them because the changes, essentially, if we, if we think batting and we think, right, what's happening up at the top? Duplicy and Watson are going well. They're not going to change that because these guys have just got runs. Now, um, get number three, right. Raidu, must play. He's been in form. He's an important player. Who comes in four? Who yeah, comes Jadav. in five? Yeah, that right? Jadav last time was a problem for them. Yeah. Got stuck. Keda Jadav hasn't got runs. He hasn't got runs this tournament. But he is in, and there was Morley Vijay before who didn't get runs, right? 
and he's come out of the side, who else is hanging around there waiting as a batsman to come in and bat at four? Who has the trust of um, Donny and Fleming? I don't know. So I, 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 I think, think Donny. Might... <laughs> <I'm just laughs> well, Donny will walk in at five. Yeah. yeah. Um, but who I'm thinking for the batting four? order. That's the question. Well, I'm saying, what if, what if you, if you just pull that squad again, all right? What if you reject? You got your top three and you got them there. What if you get Dhoni at four, Jadeja at five, right? Then you get uh, either of Sam Karan or Bravo, whoever you want to get at six and seven, right? Right, and then just you try and just then pad another bowler, perhaps. But then their batting is. I I don't know. I feel like. There is a, there is something missing in this puzzle about the balance, and they they have the Polly is their balance still there, and they just not from their players because possibly they're a bit rusty. Yeah, I think the the key is actually being is the Indian batsmen haven't really come as good as they could have. Um, as probably meant, Murli Vijay, he had his chance. Guy Kwadi, yeah, Yadav's performance in the last game, I don't know, it was just mind blowing to sit there and watch him turn down singles and then for him no, to so. get on strike and just yeah. smash it to all yeah. parts. It was like, I don't understand what just went on there. I mean, for that that performance, I think he deserves just to carry the drinks for one game just to teach him a lesson. <laughs> but as you say, who comes in? Because, you know, it's not coming back off. Or you're not starting this tournament coming on the back of uh, six months of domestic cricket where people mm. are firing and saying, listen, give him an opportunity. You've got to go and try and judge it by the nets. And, and that's a dangerous place to be searching for a replacement. So I'm sure they'll they'll try and show some faith in him again and maybe just have a word on in, with him to find out what he was thinking and how they can adjust it to, to make him a little bit more positive in the next game. Yeah, and not say no thanks when someone's giving him a single. <laughs> anyway, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Thanks. They're missing Suresh Raina, yeah, Pommy. Oh, yeah, we said that right from the beginning. Um, what is it? It's just twice that he's got 300 runs, as, and we're saying 300 runs in a tournament, and we're saying that those are his bad performances yeah. in, in this space of what, 12 years or whatever it is. So, yeah, of course you're going to miss a guy like that. And if you if you if you do that, actually, if you throw him into number three, and then you shift Ambati Rider down to four, suddenly it's a totally different order, right? It's a it's a totally different batting unit. It gels quite nicely, and everyone is in the slot that they like, is in the slot where they operate best, and and the way you go. So, yeah, they're missing him big time. Hmm. Well, okay, we will know tomorrow because. That's the thing with uh, Dhoni and Fleming and uh, Chennai is can't predict anything, right? Can't predict. Sorry, Paul, you were saying? Yeah, just one thing I add. I think, if I remember correctly, when I was at Mumbai, this is one of those games we wanted to be rained out. I'm not 100% sure, but if I think if I remember correctly. <laughs> so, so hold on, I, I'm going to give you a little report. Um, it's cooled down in uh, in Dubai. It's cooled down. It's cooled down. We've gone from 39 degrees, and uh, now it's 38. <laughs> get your get your jackets out. Yeah? Get your jackets out. It's, it's, no rain, not a cloud in the sky. So this one's not going to be rained out. <laughs> well, you know, it is Dubai. If you ask politely, they possibly could have rained some clouds in the sky as well, right? What you could, yeah, they could. What you could get, maybe. Nah, you can't. Never mind. I was going to say a sandstorm. Nah, there's buildings everywhere. Yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Well, those Mission Impossible times. No, it's not going to happen. It's, not gonna happen. it's a bit of a storm that we always have with the joy factor question. And uh, today, I think people stormed in with their replies. The question is, how do we still uh, remember and celebrate the first Indian to score a double century, the first class match in India against the Europeans at Pune in the early 20th century? Let's go to the answer. Let's do it. Hormas Ji Kang. Ah, Mumbai's Kanga League is named in his honor. Hmm, it's the wet weather, the wet weather tournament. We're talking about rain. What do you know, serendipity? The answer was about a monsoon tournament. <laughs> the Kanga go. League is a wet weather tournament. I'm 
Paulie, you've spent time in Mumbai. Uh, you, you know about this. It's just fascinating, one of its kind tournament mm. that's played in the rain. The cricket is played in the rain. There's people in England who are watching this and going, what you talk? What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so I, I studied marketing at, at Varsity. And when I was at the Mumbai Indians, what happens is when they're expecting the monsoons, they get those massive uh, blue sheets yeah. that they put Tops. over yeah. the housing. Right? Mm -hmm. So I told them that they, they need to do an advert where they've got everyone getting the blue sheets and putting them over the top of the roof. And the people go, why are you doing it now? Monsoons is only in a few months' time. It's not monsoons. The Mumbai Indians are starting. Go blue. Mm -hmm. so I thought they would have an advert like that. That would have been quite cool. Yeah. <laughs> they may do it still. <laughs> they, they, they're going to do it now. They're going to do it now. <laughs> You heard it here first. You're getting a little invoice from Sean Pollock. Durban flying in. There it comes. Thank you so much, Sean Pollock. Thank you for your cricketing insights. Thank you for your free marketing campaigns. We thank you. Listen, you said they were for free. <laughs> <laughs> Should have settled terms before you gave the idea. <laughs> You've dealt with enough Indians to know this by now. <laughs> Who are you? Yes, please. How can we help you? We've got a, we've got a winner for the joy factor, of course. Uh, let's see who got this answer in about the Kanga League. Hari Karnatic. He's 22 HKPL. 92 HKPL. What is HKPL? What, is, what does that even mean? HKPL. Hmm. I don't know. I have no idea. Hybrid kilometers per liter? I don't know. Well, let us know. Send us in a tweet and let us know. But of course, uh, congratulations uh, to you, uh, young man. You got it uh, correct. It was indeed the Kanga League. Well, a big thank you to Sean Pollock and Pami Mbangwa. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you so much. It's been, uh, it's been a fun Thanks, Yeah. Yeah, been good. Any one of you here tomorrow? Anyone of you here tomorrow? Well, me neither. Yeah. Well, me neither. No. I'm in Hindi, so I'm not no. here as well. And none of us are here. No. Let's just no let's just wreck this room before we leave. <laughs> shall, we? shall we? Just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's he gone? <laughs> Can you hear me now? You wrecked, you wrecked no, you, where, You're wrecking the place. I'm just wrecking my own place. I, I got to go turn some furniture uh, around, <laughs> stick some to the ceiling. Tommy, do the same. Polly, do the same. Let Simon and Joy clean up tomorrow. Uh, this was my 11th Circle Presents Craig Buzz Live. We tend to go a little crazy this time of the night. Sometimes we go crazy in the afternoon as well, as we will tomorrow at 3 p.m. Thanks for watching. <laughs>